Okay, so here's my first attempt at an alcohol stove. Uh, I'm using a YouTube video to build it from Survive Until Rescue 1. So thank you very much, Survive Until Rescue 1, for giving me step-by-step -step instructions. So here's what I need. Needle nose pliers, box cutter, marker, a one-inch spacer, quarter-inch spacer, clamp, can, razor blade, drill, and some denatured alcohol. So we're going to get started on this project. Alright, so the first step is to cut off the top in here. Alright, so it takes a while. It's just starting to poke through in some spots. Alright, so I just sort of got it almost all the way through. I'm just kind of pounding on it. You'll see it's sort of splitting away here. It's actually a little bit harder than I thought it would be. So there you go. Step one is complete. Okay, so the next step is we're going to drill all the little tiny holes where the fire is actually going to come out of. And what we're going to do is we're going to make 32 of them. So you just start in half. And then you go exactly opposite of that. And you just kind of keep cutting it in half. So I have there. I'm just eyeballing it because I don't really care if it's perfect. So there's four. And then what I'm going to do is just cut it in half. So you got between there and there. It's about right there. I'm just going to keep cutting it in half, splitting the difference between the two lines every time. Till I get 32 of them. Okay, so I got all 32 little tick marks on there, pretty much evenly spaced. I'm going to use a spacer right here. I'm going to push this on there. I'm just going to try to spin this so it puts a line. It's in the exact same height all the way around. Like that. So I have a line where I'm going to drill all the little holes. So the next step in the process is to drill on each little crosshair all the way around with a 1 16th inch drill bit. So I'm going to start that now. If you put a little pressure on it, it makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes. Okay, so as you can see, we got tiny little holes all the way around now. I got the one inch spacer, the quarter inch spacer, and the razor blade. And I got it all clamped together to the workbench. And we're just going to make a nice smooth line an inch and a quarter up from the bottom of the can. So let's give it a try. And what you should be able to do is just sort of pop that so 
So there's the top of the stove. So then you take this and on the bottom of another can, I'm using a full one because it's easier to hang on to, you try to push it on here to sort of stretch out what you just made. But you got to be careful because you don't want to get the whole thing stuck on there. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of the can and I'm going to cut the bottom off. I took out my quarter inch spacer and I just have my one inch spacer in there. Um, and that's because of the difference in the tops and the bottom. So let's try to cut this off. Okay, so got it all the way undone. There's the bottom. So I have two quarter inch spacers and a one inch spacer and the can. And now we're going to cut this at an inch and a half. So this part's really tricky. I've been around it numerous times. Doesn't look like I went deep enough in some spots. Ah. Well, I guess that'll work. There's my one and a half inch spacer and then I'm just going to take some scissors and just cut this so we can make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so here's where we're at. We have our inner piece, our bottom, and our top. What we want to do is take the bottom and uh, just fit this in there kind of loosely. You don't want it too tight. Stick it in there. And then where it overlaps, take your marker and where these two pieces overlap, you want to mark where they would go together. Like that. So you have a mark on the inside and a mark on the outside. Now what you want to do is take scissors or your box cutter and cut halfway down one of them. And then the other mark transpose And then you can fit them together. So I made one minor change here. Put the flaps on the inside instead of the outside. It makes a little nicer circle. Um, make sure that you make this thing big enough. And maybe you almost use this as your guide instead of the bottom of the cup or the can. Make sure this thing fits back in the lid all the way like that. I was really close to making it too small. 
So make sure that's good. And then what we're going to do oops, is <clears throat> cut little air holes in the bottom of this. We're going to cut three of them. Not air holes, fuel holes. Just little V's in the bottom. Just like that. All right, now it's time for assembly. Uh, he put the uh, this piece notch side down first, but mine had such a tight fit. I'm gonna try to put it in this one first to make sure that it goes in there all the way. Okay. And this piece is gonna go in there and go inside the lid. That's why we stretched out the top port part. And he said this could take some time, so be patient. Okay, so I got it in there, and then you just uh, push it together evenly all the way down until the inner wall seats in the bottom. Okay, did a couple test runs because I wanted the uh, video to look cool, but one thing I noticed is I pushed this bottom up too far and it covered up these little holes, some of them. So what I actually, I tried to pull it apart but couldn't do it. So I actually just drilled just through this bottom that I pushed into the top, make, making sure I didn't go through the wall here. Um, and now it now it works really good. Also, uh, it, I mean, it takes a little bit of fuel. You got to put more in there than than you might think. Um, but I'm gonna do a little test run and see how fast it can, uh, can boil a liter of water, just like all the other video, videos do. So here's my liter of water. Here's my pot. This is just normal tap water. I'll hit the lights for you so you can see this thing heat up. All right. So I'm going to add the alcohol. So this is self priming. There we go. So as you can see, it's primed. Got a stopwatch here. It's at all zeros. Put my lid on my pot. And we'll hit start. Off center. There you go. I will let you know when it boils. One thing I'll say is that if I were to do this again, these holes need to be up just a little bit higher. Um, for my pot, it's pretty narrow. I made them about sixteenth of an inch below the ridge of the pop can. I need to make them probably on the ridge of the pop can or maybe slightly above. You can't put them too high because it'll put the flame out. But it looks like the flame is creeping a little bit around the sides more than I'd like.
it looks like we are almost at a boil. Just a, we're almost at the seven minute mark. I would say that's a rolling boil, definitely hot enough to cook anything. So there you go, mine was a little over seven minutes. It's almost rolling. There it goes. So 7.30. I have my rolling boil at 7.30 with the alcohol stove. So now I'm going to try my hiking stove and see how fast it boils water. By the way, when it's burning off the rest of the alcohol and you take the pot off, this is what it looks like. So not only can you cook, but you can warm your hands. Because <laughs> this is very hot. All right, so here's my hiking stove. It's called a Brunton Crux. Uh, it's exactly the same as the Brunton Flex. They just changed the name. Um, Two Guys Outdoors has a really cool video on it that talks all about it. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing we did with my alcohol stove. Uh, got my pot, let it cool down. It's got uh, a liter of water in it. So let's fire this bad boy up. Start the timer, put the lid on, alright so we're at 3 minutes 47, 50 seconds, you can see underneath, I don't know if you can tell, it is glowing red. Which is very cool. I got this thing cranked up pretty high, not as high as it'll go because it just kind of gets to the point where it wastes fuel. Oh yeah, we are at a rolling boil. So that is under five minutes. It's splashing out here, so let me turn it down. So that's under five minutes. I'm right at sea level for a rolling boil with my stove. And it was just over seven minutes with this little guy. This weighs next to nothing. This costs 50 cents because that's how much Kern's juice cost. These are about three bucks a piece. This stove you can get online now for 60 roughly. So 50 cents plus the cost of fuel which a quart of alcohol cost me less than 10 bucks. So neat little project.